get started. Okay, well, thank you um, all for coming out today. Uh, my name is Ann Watson, and I am delighted to announce that I am running for Vermont State Senate. I'm running for the Senate to represent the Washington County District because I care deeply about Central Vermont and its residents. I will be a strong, experienced voice to fight for a livable planet and protect working families. While there are many topics I feel are worth fighting for, I'm particularly passionate about equitably transitioning off of fossil fuels, expanding access to health care, and supporting Vermont's working families. You may know that I've been the mayor of Montpelier for the past four years and a city councilor in Montpelier for the past five years prior to that. But besides serving as Montpelier's mayor, I'm also a wife, a new mother, a teacher, a union member, and a former Ultimate Frisbee coach uh, for the Montpelier Solons. As a teacher, I work every day with students who are worried about the impact of climate change. If we're going to substantially decarbonize our lifestyles, we need policymakers to take climate science seriously and to rapidly ramp up our transition off of fossil fuels. During my time on the council and as mayor, the city has made significant progress in reducing its carbon emissions, sourcing nearly 40% of its energy for municipal operations from renewable sources. Just a few days ago, I was on the town hall Zoom meeting with the senators from Washington County. One of the issues that came up at that meeting was that people were worried about the eligibility, their eligibility for Medicaid uh, and that, that eligibility going away. And recently the CEO of GoFundMe was quoted as saying that nearly a third of all donations to the GoFundMe site are for medical costs. We know that our healthcare system is broken in many ways. The gold standard for me is universal, single payer, and I will work towards that end or towards any legislation that improves access, affordability, and increases benefits. Earlier I mentioned working uh, to protect uh, working families. That means many things to me, but it certainly includes increasing access to high quality child care and paid family leave. As a new mom, I'm now uh, experiencing firsthand the, uh, the trouble of finding high quality, affordable care. According to the study uh, by Let's Grow Kids, in Washington County, 72% of infants that are likely to need care are in fact without access to regulated care. Vermont is leading the country in equitable public education, so I know we can solve the issues around childcare. Similarly, we need paid family and medical leave to support working parents of young children and those who must care for sick or elderly family members. According to the National Partnership for Women and Families, even unpaid, uh, oh, I'm sorry, even unpaid leave under the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act is inaccessible for 65% of Vermonters. And also according to them, paid leave means people, especially women, are not forced to leave the labor force to care for their families. The legislature got very close a couple of years ago to passing paid family leave, and I believe it's an issue that could pass in a future session. Vermont's economy has the potential to grow and the quality of life for Vermonters has the potential to improve if we can provide high quality childcare, paid family leave, affordable housing, and healthcare to all who need it. Which is why, as your Senator, I will work to increase access to high quality childcare and paid family and medical leave. You may have heard that Senator Polina is not seeking re-election. I have a deep respect for Senator Polina and the work that he's done on behalf of Washington County. I particularly appreciate that he led the charge for Vermont's Green New Deal. These are some big shoes to fill and I hope I can measure up uh, to his level of service. I've spent nearly 10 years dedicated to leading Montpelier and now I'm committed to serving all the people of Central Vermont as we navigate financial, economic, and social challenges. Thank you again, everybody, for coming out today. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to chat. Thank you so much. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's a great question. So uh, I know uh, there was at least one uh, 
Representative Mary Hooper, who um, was the mayor and was a rep at the same time, and I have a great deal of respect for her in doing that, um, especially uh, going into the Senate, I anticipate stepping down um, as mayor uh, if elected. Got it. Yeah. You mentioned uh, your students and being a teacher, being really concerned about climate change. Yes. What are some other things you hear, rumblings from them, and how would you keep them prepared? Yeah, about? sure. Well, so especially since uh, COVID, there's been a, a really, uh, a real openness about people talking about mental health needs and even among students, you know, they get that uh, they need to be socializing, they need to be out, um, you know, uh, taking care of themselves and, uh, and even like a lot of them, even like their families are, are having a hard time. And so uh, what, one of the things that I I'm taking from that is I, I know that mental health is often not, it doesn't receive the same level of attention or care in the healthcare world. And so that is going to be a, a priority for me as well, especially in conversations around healthcare. Yeah. And being mayor, are there ways that you think that um, perhaps state government can work more closely or more efficiently with local government? Sure. Well, I think that there are some uh, things that um, well, actually, let me back up. I, I see local government as a place where municipalities can try things out, where we can be a laboratory. Uh, and I know we've, in Montpelier, have certainly pushed the edge on some things. And I, I think that is an opportunity for state legislature, the state legislature to, uh, to see what's working and to take on uh, issues at the state level as well. Uh, so being in touch with with the local representatives and what's happening uh, at the more ground level, you know, the, the one step closer to the street, so to speak, is uh, a really important way for people to, for the legislature to um, stay in touch with what is uh, really important to, to folks. Is there anything that you've led in Montpelier that you think could be brought to, like, any specific proposals that you have? Like yeah, wide. sure. Well, just as one example, we did uh, pass a plastic bag ban that uh, ended up not passing as a charter amendment, but the state took on as a whole. So that was um, pretty delightful for us. Uh, but one of the things that we have uh, pioneered here is uh, non-citizen voting. Uh, and we know that uh, we have a high degree of confidence that the system is working. We've already had one election uh, where non-citizens were allowed to participate. Uh, and as we collect more data from that, I, I think that is going to be a, an opportunity, a, a topic that I think could expand to other other towns and perhaps the state uh, as a whole. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Super. All right. Uh, whew. Well,